For someone who's only 19 years old, the life and basketball times of LaMelo Ball have already been a wild ride. There have been Lamborghinis, a bottomless pit of mixtapes, and much criticized forays across the globe. Sure, he's gotten famous with his displays of skill and flair, but how applicable will that be between the lines? Playtime's over, and the ink on LaMelo's pre-NBA resume is finally dry. So what's the verdict? Is he a stud or a dud? A gym or a bum? A boss or a bust? LaMelo Ball is a brilliantly skilled wing-sized primary ball handler who barely needs a bio rundown. He stands at about 6 feet and 6.6 inches and weighs around 190 pounds. We don't have reliable measurements for his wingspan or his vertical. By my view, he's an agile athlete, but not an elite one with a frame that could and should hold some more weight. Not long ago, I spent some time pondering the basic facets of player development, and this is what I came up with. The first is education. How much instruction and guidance does a player receive and apply to their game? Second is emulation. Who does the player feel inspired to borrow from or copy? Last is experimentation. Trying things, letting it fly, and consequences be damned. I think that LaMelo Ball is extremely heavy in the experimentation area, maybe as heavy as any high-level prospect as we've had in a long time, and it shows. The best passers in this draft are wing-sized or taller. Tyrese Halliburton, Denny Abdiha, and Leandro Balmero are each terrific playmakers, but I think that LaMelo Ball is the most talented passer and ball handler in the 2020 NBA draft, and I don't think that it's close. His comfort level with the ball in his hands is very high. You very rarely see LaMelo stretching his capabilities for control as he navigates traffic or he's in the half court. He varies his speeds well. The ball stays on a string, controlled and tight with his body like an electron orbiting the nucleus of an atom. In fact, in a few years, it wouldn't surprise me if LaMelo was considered one of the best ball handlers in the world. He's an artist. Melo also has an exceptional passing vocabulary. Through tight spaces for dump offs, low angle bounce passes of all kinds, lobs on the money from insane distances, he's audacious and creative. The risk taking can backfire, but he's unbothered by that. That vocabulary and touch are leveraged well by Ball's command of the rhythm that exists between his handle and his passing. When you can seamlessly flow like that on the move, especially with either hand, between a great handle and a creative passing imagination, you're able to survey everything with your eyes. But you're also able to make decisions that shave away seconds or fractions of seconds that the defense needs to react. Watch the way he calmly times his dribble to tee up this pass. It would seem like a minor detail, but an aspect that I love about LaMelo's passing technique is his feel for the arc and speed that longer passes should have. LaMelo throws catchable and quickly shootable balls. He also has something in common with his brother Lonzo in that they're both superb passers over the top and this shows up most frequently in transition. In fact, for prospects at this age, I think that LaMelo might be the best I've ever seen at that particular pass. The arc, the placement, these aren't lucky aberrations. He is phenomenal at it. As a shooter, LaMelo's reputation is understandably cloudy. Through 12 games with Illawarra in the NBL this past season, Ball only shot 25% from three, and that was on 6.7 attempts per game. At first glance, mechanically, this is not the kind of shot that inspires words like pure or pretty. And when I see players with problematic mechanics like LaMelo, Lonzo, or even somebody like Ben Simmons, all sons of former players who grew up in intensely basketball-focused environments, it makes me wonder how the hell is this allowed to happen? I know that this was an environment where they were enabled to make choices, but shouldn't someone have intervened at some point when these habits started to develop? Is it maybe because LeVar himself was never much of a scorer, according to his college coach? The caveat with LaMelo shooting, in my opinion, is that you can't just take it at face value. You have to lean in a bit and contextualize what you're seeing. He has the optics of somebody that can take and make bad shots. The good ones make you go, oh. The bad ones make you go, oh. LaMelo's energy transfer, odd as it is, looks somewhat effortless, whether moving or off the catch. He shoots with zero issue off the dribble and quickly. Now, once the ball's loaded up and he's gearing up to release, there is more flaring going on than John Hammond's tour through the Tyrannosaur paddock. All that said, it does end in an acceptable place. He appears to thumb the ball a bit, but his shooting hand is behind the ball, and I do think that LaMelo has demonstrated exemplary touch in enough aspects of his game for us to have some faith in him. 
In general, it's a quick, soft release without a noticeable hitch. The biggest factor here, however, is the lower half of his body. Ball has a habit of really letting his legs drift underneath of him, and it's not just a momentum-induced phenomenon. Because of this, his shoulders tend to rotate a bit with the ball, and his hips and legs follow, often causing him to land with his feet facing towards the left and, many times, crossed. This has been going on for a long time, all the way back to his early Chino Hills days when his identity within the Ball Brothers trio was to slink around the court like a Muppet version of Steph Curry jacking them up from 30 and 40 feet against players that were mostly bigger and stronger than him. When he was 14 years old and maturing physically, I think that he had to propel himself like that to simply get enough power in his shot to reach the rim. The problem is that he didn't really hone that technique in the following years. Lamelo shot 83 pointers in those 12 games this past season. Four of those were heaves, so we'll exclude them. I did my best to chart the attempts when his feet flailed out in front of him like this, and here's what I found. 35 of those three-point attempts were what I would consider pronounced flails, and around October 24th of 2019, we started to see more of a focus on taking set shots where his legs stayed squared underneath him, his right foot slightly forward to generate more power, and his shoulders more squared through his release. It's not perfect, but I think this is a much better looking shot, and we saw more of this as the season progressed. On these set attempts, he went 10 for 27, which is 37%. This is a repeatable shot for him and something that I think that he can build on. Brilliance often comes with quirks. Mozart had that laugh. <laughs> Baby Yoda cruelly ate those eggs of a near extinct species while the mother was nearby. Lamello has some concerns within his game that need addressing. Something that I've noticed is that Lamelo seems a little tentative once he gets into the teeth of the defense. He's a rhythm player, and when teams in the NBL played him in drop coverage, that drop between the three-point line and the charge circle would at times noticeably disrupt his comfort and rhythm. It was almost like a sudden lack of pressure totally pulled the chair from under him. This is an area where I think Lamelo really has the ability to grow. I'm lukewarm, leaning cold on his dribble pull-up game, but I'm a big fan of his runner and floater game in the middle of the floor. He hit on 42.9% of those shots, and his touch there is amazing. The issue is that he's had a bad habit of jumping the gun once he turns the corner in the pick and roll, either taking a shot from bizarrely far away or awkwardly attacking in a way that ends in a bad attempt or a clumsy turnover. That odd decision making can show up in isolation situations too. Like I said, with momentum, with someone in front of him, he excels, but when he's attacking a set defense, it often seems like he's just aimlessly stringing together dribble sequences without really responding to what the defender is actually doing. He should be cooking switches like this in the NBL, but too often he ends up in these unproductive east-west movements and then settling for a bad perimeter shot. When he's decisive, when he attacks and makes a simple move, he's a clever and crafty enough finisher to make good things happen. With his playmaking chops, the more that he gets the hang of playing chess with the backline of the defense, with his scoring, accepting contact, and forcing them to play him, the more of a headache he could become. Defensively, forecasting young players can be an alchemy where you're looking for subtle clues beyond what the results of the numbers might say. Such is the case with Lamelo. I typically take defensive stats with a gigantic grain of salt, but Lamelo's rating as one of the worst overall defenders in his league did line up with the eye test. He was very often low-motored and unfocused. He was a matador guarding the ball. He would frequently get lost in actions away from the ball. He showed poor technique by doing things like inexplicably standing upright as a screen was coming. And I think the questions that you're gonna have to ask yourself are A, why did this happen? And B, what do we think he's actually capable of? This is at least in part due to the fact that this is the first time in his life that he's been held accountable to play defense. The situation was exacerbated by the fact that Illawarra had the worst record in the NBL this past season, 3-9 and nine when Lamella was in the lineup, and there were times when their team defensive communication was unthinkably bad. I have my doubts that he's ever a plus defender, but the time for excuses is over. Lamello has the size and quickness at 6-7 to be at least somewhat switchable, and the positional instincts to be a solid team defender. He's not going to be a mistake eraser. He's not going to effectively ball hawk high level scores that he can be better. The tools for elite or great defense are a gift, but good or passable defense is often a choice. The ball is in his court on this one. 
I know that this is an odd comparison, but if we're looking at the skill set and how he got here, you could easily compare LaMelo's development to that of Pistol Pete Maravich. Both players grew up in homes where they were obsessively groomed by parents who were former athletes. Both consistently were enabled to play extremely freely and that allowed them to grow into audacious and virtuosic ball handlers and passers. And both players accumulated a lot of fame that ran parallel to their actual success on court as a result. Fame within the basketball world and respect among the people who work seriously within it are two things that don't always go hand in hand. Maravich and LaMelo are also similar in the fact that they seem to irritate a sector of basketball purists. Look, I don't know the depths of LaMelo as a person. There are some questions that we just can't answer. Is he a killer? Does it irk him that people want to show him up? With all the fame and success and comfort that he's gotten off of the court, just how driven is he? From afar, he seems like a mostly quiet kid who's grown up in a circus of media coverage and off-court celebrity. He's hard to read, but what I do know is that Lonzo is a solid NBA player that came from the same environment while facing similar criticisms coming out of college. And I think that LaMelo is even more of a talent. My expectation is that, at his peak, LaMelo hovers in that range of the top 35 to 60 players in the league. I think that he'll be below average on defense and skilled enough as a playmaker and a scorer to be an above average starter in the NBA. The type of player that's more of a co-pilot star than a QB1. Somebody that can squeak their way into an all-star appearance if the cards break just right on a given year. I think that he's going to be a top tier pick and roll and transition playmaker. I think that he'll be a passable spot up shooter and someone that can generate easy buckets in the middle of the floor. Lamelo has the talent to justifiably be taken with the top pick in the 2020 NBA draft and the talent to surpass my prediction. I do assume that I'm going to be entertained either way. Let me know if you agree.